Hi, my friends. So, um, <clears throat> we are in chapter 25 of Acts, and I wanted to get in a few uh, chapters if I can. Um, nothing to speak of as far as the news is concerned, still talking about taxes and uh, sexual, uh, uh, you know, things that. You know, there's so many other horrible things that are going on. It, we, we've got some 1,300 mile, 1,300, yeah, um, asteroid something coming into our solar system. Meteor, sorry, meteor, uh, not asteroid, meteor that we've never had in our solar system before. Okay, Thir 1,300 feet long or something like that. Um, uh, BP Earth Watch has a video on it. You might want to check it out. We, we, we've got, you know, the, the ozone layer. We have so many things. We have in the, the um, convention of, of global warming uh, just showed, um, you know, ranking of who, who's doing what, you know, in the world as far as damaging our, our world. We, we've got, you know, we've so many things that are going on in the world that need to be fixed and taken care of, and we're not doing it. Um, I do believe that each person who does their little part will make a difference. Everybody can make a difference. And if those, you know, hundreds of millions of people do their part, then the, the, the world will change. But it, it, it's gonna. It it takes time sometimes, you know. So uh, I don't. I don't think we have that much time. And you know, I don't want to live in a world where having a baby is a miracle. Okay, or that it's it's a um, it's an oddity or something that you rarely see. Like you know, I don't want it to be extinct. I don't want women to be barren because of all of the crap that we're doing to our earth. Um, these are possible outcomes that can happen to our earth, that the earth itself will be barren, um, that we won't be able to grow anything. We won't, women won't be able to have babies. We, we won't have food, we won't have water. We'll live in you know, plastic bubbles. What kind of life is that? That's ridiculous. We really need to be doing something now to fix the the earth, um, to uh, you know make things better for for ourselves and and for our future generations. We we really need to do this for for ourselves. Don't you agree? Anyway, leave me a comment. What you know? What you think about it? Um, I do hope that you all have a great Thanksgiving. I know you probably don't have time to listen to these videos because of all the holidays and stuff. Our, our freeways were a mess last night. I couldn't believe it. It just gets worse and worse every year. Um, I, I think I'm thinking Tuesday I'm good. You know, I'll just take Wednesday off, you know, because it happens to be my birthday today. Um, and I'll, I'll get home. But no, it took me longer than normal just to get home. Uh, last night the the freeways were were white and red ribbons solid ribbons through uh, the 405 and the 5 freeways the 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 number of the it's the number of the freeway um that cuts through LA and and so forth and you can probably look it up and see just what I'm talking about all right so <clears throat> chapter 25 <clears throat> now Paul's being in prison he's left there uh, to be imprisoned, and um, when I last, you know, my last video, so he's imprisoned by Felix, and now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem, then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him, and, a, and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither. 
Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able to go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down into Caesarea the next day, sitting on the judgment seat. Um, commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood around about, laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they would not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, or neither against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. But for if I be an offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things, whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Hast thou appealed unto Caesar? And unto Caesar shalt thou go? And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came into Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, there is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom I was at Jerusalem. Um, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accuser face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come hither without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth, against whom, when the accuser stood by, they brought none accus accusation of such things as I suppose, but had certain questions against him of their own um, superstition and of one of Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of question, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept until I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself tomorrow, say he, Thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, with great pomp, and with and entered into the place of the hearing, with the chief captains, the principal men of the city, at Festus, commanded Paul, was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augusta, I had determined to send him, of whom I had no certain thing to writ unto my Lord. Wherefore I brought him forth before you, especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had I might have somewhat to write, for it seemeth, to me, a reason, uh, unreasonable to send a prisoner and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things wherein I am accused of the Jews especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning. And if they would testify 
that after the most straightest speck of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Now I stand and am judge in the hope of the promise made of God and to our fathers, and to which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. And for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why, uh, why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every syn synagogue, compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even into strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus, my authority and my commission from the chief priest at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But arise and stand among thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for a purpose, to make thee a minister, and witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things to which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open thy eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and of Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles they should repent and turn to God and do works and meet for repentance. For the causes of the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets of Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first, and should arise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus, and with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning, learning does thou make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believe thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would do, I would to God, that only thou, but also all that hear me this day, are both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. And then he had thus spoken, and the king rose up, the governor Bernice, and they sat with them. And they were gone aside, and they talked between themselves, saying, This man doth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might be set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. And I'm going to stop there. So, um, I guess they're going to maybe send him to Caesar next. All right, we will continue on chapter 27 next time we meet. Have a blessed day. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.